successful marriage on the Real Housewives. And interestingly enough, the odds for staying married once you're on the Real Housewives <laughs> aren't so good. Uh, and they're one of the few couples that has a really lovely, intimate, fantastic marriage. So they're going to share some. Our relationship has definitely had an ugly time since the show started. I don't think that it's all peachy roses all the time. But um, we just did a lot of therapy before we took initiative to actually go on the show. We were we went through six months before we actually signed all the paperwork, and we wanted to make sure our foundation was strong enough that it could handle being rocked by every possible thing you could possibly have thrown at you. And and you do you get every every temptation possible, every negativity. Possible. I mean, it's just it, it wants to rip you apart, and that, not to mention that the producers would like that because you know it makes their show their ratings much better. But I think that we've just stayed strong and true, and we let each other be each other. I think uh, a lot of it is preventive maintenance and anticipating what's coming. Uh, I would never recommend anybody be on a reality show as you far wouldn't. as your marriage. <laughs> three out of the four <laughs> couples, three out of the four married couples on the Housewives are now divorced, and we're. The only ones in the last few years, years that are married, um, but I think it's just preventative maintenance and anticipating. Just didn't get the papers yet. Oh. Wow! You heard it here first, people. I'm so nervous. <laughs> so you're gonna have to pay child support. Uh, uh, thank God. I didn't she was sign teasing, right, Alexis? You don't want to start doing that here. Uh, for myself, um, I actually hadn't, I had thought about it a lot and I had great peace when I, uh, when I was sent home and, and said goodbye and I, I, mean, I went through all of that and that whole journey and came to that point, but you don't realize you're doing it in front of millions of television viewers. It's your own experience in the moment. So for myself, I didn't really go through the motions. Uh, I went through those motions and there's a relapse. That's the difference, I think, is that when you're watching it with everybody else and you've already gotten over the emotions and kind of processed it, everybody else is processing with you and so it kind of brings up very, very unique emotions that you wouldn't expect to go through. Right, because it sounds like it was a real owie. It sounds like it was a real heartbreak for you. Um, I think that, yeah, we were both in our separate seasons with the, the, the people that said goodbye to us. We were both um, very taking it seriously, and we weren't there as a joke, and we were trying to really see how there could be a future. Maybe not necessarily putting a ring on the finger right there. I, I right. didn't need that. I wasn't needing to be engaged and get married right away. I just, what were you looking for? You were looking for a... A companion, a, a, a soulmate, a, a somebody, a commitment. How did it affect you to be in that heartbreak and then also have the culture weighing in on this rejection? Well, that's the unique thing is that with reality TV, you go through an experience like that and you come home and you can't share it with anyone. That's, that's what makes it right. in the real world is that if that happens in the real world, normally you go to your friends, you go to your family, you talk to your friends, you the bar. Exactly, but in this experience, you can't talk to anyone about it. Right. And that's what makes it the most difficult thing in the process is that you kind of have to you know, do it on your own. Okay, then you talk to one person. What's that? You had to talk to one person. Oh, yeah. No, you're not. <laughs> no, no. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, okay, you can. I mean, you really find out who you are in about a minute because who you thought you were, and then you get to watch the worst parts of yourself because they certainly don't want to play the best parts of yourself. For some reason, America celebrates people's faults. Sticky wickets. So they, a lot of times, it's not scripted, but they won't finish scenes. For example, if my daughter's kicking and screaming on the floor, and um, I say, Melania, that behavior is unacceptable, they're not going to show the kicking and screaming. They're just going to show me talking to her about that. I think that's kind of what you're asking. It magnifies the good and it magnifies the obvious, which you don't even realize is the obvious. So for us, we really um, have taken a long, hard look at our relationship. We had a contract with each other and our therapist before we even started the show. Wow. And I think that was really important that we sat down, we wrote many rules such as um, we will agree on anything that they ask us to do 
or we won't, if one of us doesn't agree, we won't do it. Like if they want to have me go to a nightclub, we have a rule in our marriage, we don't go to clubs without the other person. So our, the reason we wrote that contract was so that if they, they start to say, on this trip with the girls, you have to come, you know, we want you guys to meet at 10 o'clock at the such and such club. I already knew that I, that way I wouldn't do that, but having a contract made it so that I, when I'm in the moment, I'm like, oh, I can't, you know, I need to remember how important my marriage is. So you had an agreement about your ethics and your values and you weren't going to let them be corrupted because you were on a TV show. Because you're in the moment. It's not even because of the TV show, but you know how when you're just in a moment, you're like, everyone's all excited and yeah, we're gonna go get it, let's go. And then you're like, oh, wait, I'm married. Because oh. there's a production company, it turns the footage into um, the network. But I actually feel like the, the divorce is like a hot topic. And they will, things will become situational. Questions for Alexis and Jim. Knowing what you know now, and from what you've heard discussed here on the panel, would you ever do the bachelor or the bachelorette if you had not known each other? I mean, I would have to say I would probably not be on the bachelorette. I just, I wouldn't want to be in a room with 20 other women competing for one man's attention. I want eyes on me, so I'll find them as well. Absolutely not. My phone, I use my phone. There's no, and same to him, if his phone rings, I answer it, if my phone rings, he answers it. And it's not that we're sitting there going, oh, oh, hello, expecting to hear like another woman's voice on the other line. It's just the fact that it eliminates any fear or any opportunity for anything that shouldn't be happening to be happening. Let, let me address the Facebook thing. There's a Facebook fan page and a Facebook friend page. And the fan page is a general response. That's no problem. But a friend page, to make somebody of the opposite sex your friend, on Facebook. To me, in a relationship, you're opening the door for temptation. Wow. We don't go to coffee with friends of the opposite sex unless the other partner is with us. We don't like, like, I don't just call up some guy named Joe and say, hey, you want to go grab a cup of coffee? You know, except for my um, assistant who's gay. Well, not my assistant that's here, my, make it my other assistant who's gay. Um, I mean, I go everywhere with him, but he's, he goes, you know, Joe's okay with that. But so we're just really strict. We don't have guys' nights out and girls' nights out. We don't. Okay, so they're not going to nightclubs. You're not going to we strip, do do clubs, strip we, clubs. No strip clubs. We do uh, together. And we do <laughs> about porn. Uh, uh, you have like, that's where they're getting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we do not. We I'm, I'm trying to be um, comical in this, in this hour. Yes. Yeah,